NFED antennas are incredibly versatile and increasingly popular among amateur radio operators, yet many overlook the critical role of the counterpoise in these systems. In this presentation, we'll explore why NFED HF antennas need a counterpoise, how to design one effectively, and what pitfalls to avoid. Whether you're using an NFED half-wave antenna with a 49-to-1 transformer or a random wire with a 9-to-1 unun, understanding and implementing a counterpoise can dramatically enhance your station's performance. Let's begin by framing what makes these antennas special and what this session will cover. NFED wire antennas provide a compelling solution for many amateur radio operators. The NFED half-wave, by design, resonates on its fundamental and harmonic frequencies. In contrast, random wires rely on matching network and tuners for multiband access. While differing in structure and tuning, both share a critical feature. They are NFED and thus need an effective counterpoise for optimal performance. We'll now dig into why that's so important. At PCBWay.com, your project is more than just a circuit board. It's your vision. That's why we deliver high-quality PCB manufacturing and assembly with fast turnaround, global shipping, and prices that make sense. From a single prototype to full production runs, PCBWay.com gives you the tools and support to build with confidence. Bring your ideas to life only at PCBWay.com. The counterpoise is more than just a ground wire. It's a vital component in NFED systems that completes the RF circuit. Without it, RF currents will flow through unintended paths like your coaxial cable shield or station equipment, leading to inefficiency in RFI. In this section, we'll define the counterpoise and describe its essential role in antenna performance, especially when dealing with unbalanced systems like NFED half waves and random wires. Despite their popularity, NFED antennas carry a common misunderstanding that they require no ground or counterpoise. The reality is more nuanced. RF current must return to the transmitter, and if you don't provide a counterpoise, it will find alternative paths, often creating interference or shocks. This slide clarifies why every NFED system must include a deliberate RF return path, particularly for high efficiency or high power solutions. Although NFED and random wire antennas may appear similar, their electrical behaviors differ substantially. NFED half waves rely on harmonic resonance and work well with short counterpoises, while random wires depend heavily on impedance transformation in radial systems. Understanding these distinctions is important to designing an effective antenna setup. This slide provides a high-level comparison to set the stage for a detailed counterpoise design strategy. Counterpoise length is an important design parameter. Random wire systems benefit from quarter-wave radials per band, but NFED half-wave antennas work well with shorter, non-resonant wires. How you place and route your counterpoise wires significantly affects antenna performance. The return wire should always be connected to the feed point ground. To minimize coupling and achieve a balanced pattern, route it in the opposite direction from the antenna wire. Elevated wires work well, but even ground laid wires can be effective if properly placed. Avoid contact with conductive objects and do not coil excess length. These small details can drastically influence efficiency. Letting the coaxial cable serve as the counterpoise is a common practice, especially during quick deployments. It works, but introduces potential issues. RF on the coax shield can cause RFI in your equipment and even pose a shock hazard. Proper use includes adding a choke at a calculated distance to isolate the counterpoise section. Though this technique can be useful in field ops, it's not a substitute for a dedicated counterpoise in permanent setups. Adding a dedicated counterpoise wire is the best practice for NFED antennas. It gives you precise control over RF return currents, especially when combined with common mode chokes. While short counterpoise may be enough for NFED half waves, random wires perform best with quarter wave radials per band, or a set of non-resonant wires. This setup not only improves efficiency, but also significantly reduces RFI. There is no one-size-fits-all counterpoise solution. Each method has trade-offs depending upon your operating goals, location, and power level. For quick deployment, using coax as a counterpoise might work. For reliable long-term operation, dedicated wires, resonant or non-resonant, provide best results. Optimizing your antenna system means more than just deploying wires. Fine-tuning the counterpoise length, installing a proper choke, avoiding resonant traps are all essential steps. Pay attention to safety as well. RF voltages at the NFED feed point can be substantial. Mistakes in counterpoise design can cripple even the best antenna installation. 
Common errors include ignoring the need for a counterpoise, over-relying on ground rods, or accidentally using lanes that are resonant on operating bands. Placement is also critical. Avoid running return wires close to your main radiator. NFED antennas only work well when treated as a system, one that includes the radiator and functional counterpoises. From field setups to fixed stations, planning your RF return path is important. Coaxial cable isn't a magical substitute. It must be managed with chokes. Whether you use a short wire, multiple radials, or creative indoor counterpoise options, intentional design and tuning make all the difference. Think of the counterpoise as the other half of your antenna, because it is. And that's going to do it, folks. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.